Hi, welcome to the Mushroom Circle videos. I'm going to tell you today uh, how we made our first uh, HEPA flow hood, uh, how we did the design and the calculation and choose uh, our equipment and put everything together. So it's our first one. We are not experts. Uh, we are not here to make, uh, to give lessons. Uh, but somehow we probably summarize all the research you have to do if you are uh, building uh, your first HEPA flow hood. <coughs> if you are expert, please uh, tell us uh, what you think in the comments. We will be happy to know what could be improved in our design and uh, in uh, my video. So, uh, first I will describe what is uh, HEPA flow hood and then I will explain how we choose the filter, the blower, the ventilator and the pre-filter. I will finish on the surprises and mistakes we had while we were building it. So, after the presentation I will show you some live pictures, live videos of the construction and uh, of our flow hood, so it is a special design, extra silent, and uh, show you the HEPA flow hood that we have built, uh, laminar flow hood, <coughs> working uh, that we are using now uh, regularly. So, uh, mushroom cultivation, we need to make uh, sterile operations. So up to now we need to use a glove box or a steel air box like in this image here and it's cheap and very efficient way of uh, doing mycology but uh, we made like half a ton of sawdust in something like this, no bigger. And uh, now uh, that we made our flow hood, uh, we keep our glove box uh, because it's a better choice for cloning uh, wild mushrooms where you don't want a lot of wind on your specimen uh, because it's uh, spread uh, contaminant everywhere. Uh, but for uh, regular uh, mushroom cultivation, it's more uh, the, the flow hood, the laminar HEPA flow hood uh, that is. Uh, Yes, so <clears throat> it's not that bad uh, uh, the glove box. Uh, there is another alternative, uh, benzene, but I won't tell you more about it here. Uh, let's talk about uh, HEPA laminar flow. The, the idea is to produce a flow of sterile air and perform the sterile operation in front of this flow. Uh, operations like uh, agar culture, spawn uh, multiplication like we see in the... Uh, uh, you have the... You can... The agar and you make your first master spawn on front of the flow hood. And this is like the different steps. And you can do every, all the sterile work, the final sawdust blocks that will give the mushrooms as well uh, on front of the flow hood. It's, it's very practical for, for us because uh, you can easily make many blocks of uh, sawdust uh, while in the glove box you have to make a few of them. <clears throat> what is a HEPA flow hood? Exactly, uh, HEPA flow hood is a filter first uh, that can filter up to 3, 0 0.3 uh, micron and uh, depending on the class of the filter it can filter like or 99.90 975% or 99.9975% of the particles 
uh, of this size bigger than 0 0.3 mi micron and uh, it works uh, it's like cloth uh, sheet of orange fiber like they say here and uh, the like the random arrangement make the the flow the difficult to cross for particles and they guarantee this uh, and so the in your if you look at uh, flow hood at the HEPA filter you will see that there is this blue aluminium separator and this white folded sheet of HEPA filter stuff. Like you say, uh, arranged, randomly arranged fibers folded like, like this and the aluminium separator keep them away from each other so they, uh, when the flow comes, they can, can have a regular distribution of air through this folded sheet filter. <laughs> so, what is laminar in HEPA laminar flow? So, all HEPA filters don't make a laminar airflow. Uh, only a certain type allow that. Uh, we need this type because uh, HEPA laminar flow hood does not only produce sterile air, it produces a laminar flow of sterile air. Where air particles, the bac bacteria, is bigger than this 0 0.3 micron. Only the virus can be smaller than this and for mycology it's not a concern, so we, we consider it sterile. So uh, so all the contaminants bigger than 0 0.3 micron, like on your front of the flow hood, on your hand, will move away from the HEPA because there is this flow blowing on your face, of uh, sterile air on your face. And it's uh, blowing this in, uh, in a way that is laminar. So when it's not laminar, it's turbulent. And when it's turbulent, there is some particles that come back in the overlay. They kind of circle around, and this makes like the possible that uh, contaminant comes from your hand to uh, to the substrate that you have near the flow hood if your flow is not laminar. Uh, and uh, after an obstacle, the flow becomes turbulent. This is a normal thing. So you don't work behind another object. You always need to be on front of a flow hood to have this laminar flow that will uh, um, blow uh, only clean air without uh, this turbulence that can get uh, Contaminants, I don't know, from around, from from you, actually, that's the biggest problem. So, uh, <clears throat> so we arrange this filter that uh, that produces laminar flow in a box like this. So it's at the bottom of the box here, and at the top of the box. Here there is, no, there is an opening and we put the pre-filter. So this is coming from Paul Stamets' book. Okay. <clears throat> and after we can work on this clean flow of laminar air when we put uh, these uh, objects in front of the EPA. So here the clean substrate is on front of the EPA. HEPA. And maybe it's better to not work behind this jar like he <laughs> like he does <laughs> on the picture. So uh, again, I will insist a bit more on what is laminarity. Uh, the fact that 
the particles move parallel to each other. This is laminarity. To achieve laminarity, you need a HEPA filter that will resist. So here we see what is inside the box. So inside this box there is a prefilter and the blower that will push air inside the plenum here that will be under pressure and there is a, the HEPA is here and this pressure will go through the HEPA filter to bring sterile air in, in the work area. <coughs> so you need we need so we needed actually a HEPA filter with a resistance sufficient uh, to build some pressure in the plenum and this what helps the flow to be laminar if the pressure is too small in the plenum meaning that the filter here is not very resistant so the, the air will go like from the blower to the outside more directly here without really building a good pressure in the plenum so this is what uh, we found the information is that we need 200 pascal of pressure here. I will give you the reference later. <coughs> Rabbit, uh, let's grow mushrooms uh, author and he's uh, saying that yes, the minimum you want is. Stamets uh, recommend to have one uh, inch of water, so it's 250 pascal in here. And uh, I will show you that it's not that easy to have this pressure, but this is the most important thing about the laminar HEPA flow. The la get the good laminarity to have a good resistance, and this means to have a bigger good blower usually. So we'll see that in detail here. Uh, uh, the, uh, the other things are that uh, separators, like the aluminium ones in the picture here, need to uh, contribute to the laminarity as well. They help to keep the folds away from each other, which is not always true in HEPA class uh, filters, but only for the one we use for making a flow hood. And uh, also we have a sufficient plenum size, uh, so the size of this box needs to be big enough for the air to distribute rather than to get to pass through directly. And uh, maybe that's one of the mistakes we did is to take only 1.5 times the filter depth because I think it was not sufficient, I find it's, it has too, ma too much difference between the corners, the different corners, so maybe it doesn't fit so well inside the plenum. Uh, but we have sufficient pressure, um, so I will tell you about that at the end. Now let's focus on the inside, so we have four components, HEPA flow hoods here, we have a blower, here, or a fan, a ventilator, a pre filter. This is, of course, inside an airtight box. Some people extend the box on the sides. We didn't. Many people don't extend the box on the sides. And many people even don't build the box around the ventilator. We did. Uh, we'll show you why uh, later. But this is the four components you will need to to make a HEPA flow hood. It's not very complicated. Let's start with the HEPA filter. So you need this class of filter, H13, H14. Uh, with a depth of 15 cm, 6 inch. And a pressure of 250 Pascal. Oops. When it is tested, with a flow at 0 0.5 meter per second. 
it's a pressure of one inch of water when it's 100 ppm. So it's not that easy to find exactly this. And uh, actually, at the, the new trend is like to go for uh, and lower pressure. Somehow, even if it's a bit turbulent, uh, it's still okay. Especially if you are doing like bulk substrate, only bags at the end. No agar, no spawn, and things like that. Nothing critical, maybe it's okay. Uh, so here uh, there's the reference for the Shumri thread that say about 200 Pascal minimum. This is the recommendation of all stamets. And uh, stamets also uh, mention aluminium separator. I'm not sure the craft uh, is as, as good, like maybe it doesn't resist as well as aluminium. So when you look about HEPA filters around, the first thing you will find is this type of uh, red cross here. It's not okay at all, it's one inch deep, it's uh, really a HEPA filter, like uh, you need something like this in the lab to filter the air that comes from outside and, uh, to positive pressure your lab with this but not to make operations. It has very low resistance, so it's not good at all for uh, HEPA laminar flow, no laminarity with this. And you see from this here that there is only small things that hold the uh, holes together, that meaning in the middle they will tend to stick together and the flow won't be very regular. So when I was looking also, I found these uh, seven centimeter uh, deep, 2.5 inch. Uh, there's a lot of people who use that. And when we I asked around, I want to make a HEPA flow, who they uh, tell me to take this. And this is what I use at the university lab. Uh, nobody worries about having Six inch deep, uh, so so it's like I don't know. Usually they have a low pressure, 120 pascal, and uh, it's like only 0 0.5 inch uh, of water, and so it's not that good. But maybe they are okay. Maybe in the next one we'll try this just uh, to see the difference. Uh, and make also less, uh, make uh, some savings because uh, less pressure means less uh, smaller engine, smaller blower means less uh, expensive blower. So let's uh, have a look here. Uh, I'm saying always the pressure at uh, some specific speed. Here it is the pressure at 0 0.5, which is the flow that we want to reach. At the, before I was mentioning always that this flow 100 fpm. <coughs> so <coughs> yes, because when we change the speed of the flow, the pressure changes in the HEPA filter, at least in theory, and it's quasi proportional. So when it's 100 percent, if we increase to 120% of the flow, the airflow, the pressure will increase to 120% of the pressure, more or less. It's not exactly proportional, but uh, it will go from 170 plus 20% is like 60, so it's 330, something like this, okay. So this is uh, the normal curve for a flow uh, for a HEPA feature, and so you can understand that it is critical to know when you get the, the pressure to know what speed we are talking about because if it's half the speed, it's half the pressure. Okay, so let's see that more in detail. We got. Uh, HEPA from a Turkish Italian uh, uh, manufacturer. It's a HEPA field HMA. Havak is a 
Havoc General Theater is the name of the manufacturer. It's a six inch. I wanted a six inch and that was like the only one I could find uh, near and uh, here for, for us it's quite near to, to take from a Turkish manufacturer. It makes sense. Uh, it's uh, the next country. And six inch and I could find another provider in uh, England. I will tell you later. In Europe, it's not easy to find the 6 inch, uh, 15 cent inch. And it has aluminum also, aluminum separator. You can get them here by the reflection of the black uh, side. <laughs> yes, this is what you do when you don't have the information about uh, stuff yet. I don't say it's aluminum, but it is. And here, uh, the, so th this is the depth. It's 15 centimeter and we choose this model the 76 by 90 here and it's it has 100 1500 cubic meter per hour okay this is very important information here we will use to so yes we want to make a six by 90, we found this Havac uh, filter, we found this flow, and we have the pressure, of course. The pressure is a bit higher. So we calculate the flow from this. The flow is 0 0.77 meter per second. So we wanted to have uh, 0 0.5 meter per second. And we have the pressure this 1.06 so it's the pressure we want but at a higher flow that's a bit the problem because now if we move it at the flow we want this is the point we want but it doesn't it's not correct our filter is not uh, doing the right job uh, but that's the best we found so what we did is puff Look, if we are running at 0 0.5 meter per second, at 100 FPM, like Summit suggested, we will get only 160 Pascal, which is 0 0.64 inch of water. It's not enough. We want more. So what we will do is to uh, increase the flow up to here, not to the max. Uh, 0 0.77 but at least 0 0.66 and we will get z this flow and we will get 0 0.9 it's not that bad the pressure so it will have a minimum of laminarity okay it is, uh so this is because the feature is not doing uh, the right job and it was really the best uh, the nearest to the to Stamets uh, recommendation so we uh, try to do it like this to have a better pressure with a higher flow okay next uh, the blower we will choose the blower using this uh, the, the, the pressure we did calculated here so we use it here we need now this flow with this pressure a blower able to do this to give us this pressure this flow okay so that we will add also a prefeature that will add probably 50 pascal of uh, pressure to the set for the same flow and some 10 percent of wear off so we will calculate here it's about 25 pascal 0 0.1 inch of water for dust over like few years of use so this gives us total flow per resistance to produce 300 pascal so we were only at this and now we are 300 pascal for 100 1300 square meter uh, cubic meter per hour Okay, so this is the blower we found. Again, uh, it's uh, the same problem. 
I will tell you more about at the end, but we can find the exact uh, blower. I mean, the number is easy here. And what we found is a blower that gives more than this at a bit higher pressure. And somehow it's a bit too strong, but I will show you. Our blower is a bit too strong. What we want is this number. It's here, 300 Pascal, 1,300 cubic. Square, uh, cubic meter per hour. Oops. Yeah, so it's here. And yeah, the HEPA alone requires this pressure. The HEPA with the pressure, this pressure, and this, this pressure. And the, the blower provides this flow at this pressure here at uh, more than 350. Okay, so we have to reduce the voltage to be able to produce the maximum at the point that we wanted. So it's it's okay to have a bit stronger if you can reduce the voltage. You can reduce the flow, but you can't increase the flow. If you, if it was here uh, the blower, it would be a problem if it's less. But if it's more, it's okay. So we use a real stat to reduce the voltage. But it's not enough. We also physically restrict the flow. We close the part of the, of the prefeature to have more resistance and reduce the flow. And to reach the flow we want, more or less. So, uh, yeah, and when we connected our blower, yeah, it was something crazy. The blower was giving this point of working. Okay, it was supposed to be 300 Pascal, but it was giving this, and it was at the uh, real star at zero, uh, at 165 volts, so it's, it was at the minimum of the real star, it was supposed to be something like, uh, yeah, if we follow this curve, it's, here it's 140, 160 is maybe something in between this curve, it's something like here, yeah, but no, it was uh, it was a crazy. So yeah, it's a French uh, SMP blower. I didn't give you the detail about the, uh, the blower, but it's uh, yeah, it's a bit too strong. Uh, yeah, this is the surprise we have. Uh, we we had and. Uh, with the blower, but yes, we can use it. We just restricted the entrance, and now it's it's giving the flow we wanted, the one thousand three hundred here, about that flow. So uh, let's go to the prefeature now. We need the prefeature of the pressure of the filter to calculate the target flow, but if you buy this like everybody does, it's 50 Pascal, 0.2 inch water, and uh, yeah, and yeah, of course, don't forget the surface of the filter, so if you want this pressure, it's at this flow, and this flow means like it's already 50, uh, 50 how much it is, like 20 by 24, exactly the one we bought actually, uh, and uh, so it's pretty big. It's not the small one that you see everybody stick to the ventilator. This one will produce, I mean, uh, the, you can use a big or just a piece of it, but it will produce much higher pressure. Actually, we could have done this, but we, we placed the big one, and after we closed it, like the half, either three quarter just to create more pressure and reduce the flow. Um, okay, yeah, so it's uh, difficult to find a good filter like more than F6, MERV 12, especially in Europe with low pressure and that's not 30 centimeter thick. So at the end, yeah, everybody uh, buys this because it's the only one and uh, also there is JSON that has this uh, feature that is quite good and quite cheap as well. 
but they didn't want to sell it to me. I don't know why. I will tell you more about it later. So we did uh, assemble everything. We uh, and it worked. We op I, yeah, I opened the Naga 30 seconds. Uh, at five centimeter of the uh, HEPA and nothing grow there after 10 days. Uh, but yeah, it's working. We don't have any problem yet. Uh, so I used the, this anemometer. It's very precise. Uh, calculate the flow, but maybe this one is okay. It's enough. Uh, but very expensive, and uh, in our design we use this idea. Not this is not our picture. Uh, we found it somewhere, and but we used something very similar to this. You will see in the video. Um, the buying experience, uh, sourcing materials of uh, HEPA was uh, personally a nightmare. Uh, but uh, yeah. It's not easy to find uh, HEPA filter, uh, especially if you have like specific uh, depth and specific uh, pressure and so on. And, uh, people want just to sell you whatever they have and they are used to sell. And here there is not a lot of information. I mean, here in Europe in, in general, uh, yeah, maybe you, you need call uh, people, but here I mean, there is nothing online, very little at the end, maybe eBay, and yeah, Jason didn't want to sell me because uh, there was a problem with their uh, payment system. I don't know, they stopped to answer the email once it happened. So it's a shame because it, uh, it's one of the good uh, Manufacturer of features, but they want to sell many features. Of course, I'm not interested in one or two. And this, you will have this reaction in uh, all these guys because uh, they are used. To, uh, I mean, to professionals, to hospitals, and things like that. They are used to sell like 10, 50, 50 features, not one filter, filter, and with uh, specific uh, requirements and things like that. So this is a uh, bit the problem when you try to find HEPA filters. You, people are not used to get uh, normal people to buy a HEPA filter. Uh, maybe eBay was a good solution, but at the time uh, in I couldn't find a good price uh, for a HEPA filter of this size, of 90 by 60 centimeter. It's It's uh, so it's uh, this price for H14 delivered with aluminum separator. Jason had it 50 euros more, and that's all in uh, I found in Europe. So maybe probably I'm crappy sourcer, <laughs> but really it was a nightmare. And the blower as well. And finally, the funny thing is, it was uh, after running all around the world, I found it in my neighborhood, just at the local shop that uh, I, in the street I, where I never go. And they had uh, the blower, this blower we bought, and they bought, uh, we bought also the rheostat. And uh, the funny thing is, oh, again, they didn't have the information, but it's a known uh, blower, so you could find the information by yourself. But the funny thing is that we got another model than the one we ordered. And uh, it was uh, fortunate because uh, finally it's, it was uh, less strong than the one we ordered. So, uh, and finally too strong anyway. So, we are better like this. And uh, the final thing is the pre-filter. Yeah, there is no cheap... Uh, I showed you, yeah, filtrates, 3M filtrates, healthy living feature. No, you can't find it in Europe. Not very cheap. I mean, there is a bit in Germany, but it's quite expensive. So, yeah, we bought it from Amazon from the US and it was 25 
euros the printer, 40 delivered, better price. Best price, I mean. Okay, I could have used, uh, I don't know, a much uh, lower class filter here or a much uh, higher pressure filter. But uh, it, it's not easy to find the filter as well, and Jason didn't want to send me the <laughs> even the filter. It's a really <laughs> funny story. Anyway, we got uh, the anemometer for this price, and the wooden box costed only 30 euros. So where I want to find the finish is uh, where the theory don't match the practice. Uh, but it's okay as long as you have a uh, HEPA that you can use for mycology. So our surprises were that the blower were, was stronger than expected, so we could have taken a smaller blower. The rheostat maximum didn't reduce at all the air, only 10-15%, not the 30% it's supposed to reduce, and not uh, like the curve say. So I, yeah, we ended using only four of the per filter. We closed the three, the three quarters, and um, there is differences in the flow between areas from 0.5 to 0.75. And this I don't like so much. That's not so good laminarity. I don't know what's. The Cause maybe the plenum is too small, maybe the HEPA is not that good, uh, Turkish Italian HEPA. Uh, anyway, we don't have a problem uh, of contamination or something, but uh, it's just uh, for the next one I would like to have it have a more regular flow everywhere in each corner and the center and area. So that's all. I will uh, let you uh, watch uh, maybe the pictures of the video of uh, the construction and the uh, laminar forward we build. And I hope that you will also build your own flowhood and you have appreciated the information in the presentations. So if you did 